This video has been a long time coming. Like many of you, I've gone through the different stages of passwords. The first is to use something simple like Banana123 on every site that I sign up to. The second is to stick to that until I get hacked, and then to change it to Orange123 in the hope that that's safer. I've never got how people can devise a system that gives them a unique password per site. I imagine it's something like, if the site is Facebook, then you shift your fingers over by one key so that it becomes gazavunrupable, followed by 123, just to be sure. Like that's going to protect you if one of your passwords is ever leaked. I don't get the obsession with making passwords impossible to remember. My favourite passwords have been the long, easy to remember ones. Unique sentences like, bananas are less secure than oranges. In my mind, this is secure, though my faith is frequently shaken by people who seemingly think that, because it's easy to remember and to type, that it must be insecure. Do they not understand the billions of combinations required to guess that phrase? Especially if I ensure the last word always starts with a capital letter. And websites don't help with this notion that it's insecure, because they insist that we must use at least one lower and uppercase letter, one number, one symbol, and one superscript symbol to ensure that I absolutely cannot remember it, nor type it on anything other than a scientific calculator. This makes the problem ours rather than theirs. Actual security be damned. So these days, I've gone one step further still by deliberately not knowing any of my passwords. They're all ridiculous 64 symbol long copy paste jobs. I've received audible gasps when I've said, I don't know my password, which to me says more about everybody else's passwords than it does my own. And if I'm ever tortured for information, I will be well and truly screwed. It also means that when I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm challenged on the spot to access something on my phone, I inevitably have to resort to an email reset, which makes me feel like my email is the weak spot of my security. But it isn't. The weak spot is all those sites I sign up to, who still manage to get leaked with alarming frequency because they went and did something stupid like to store my 64-digit mega password in an open text file somewhere. In short, I hate passwords, and things have only got worse in recent years. A website will demand that I use an authenticator app before confirming I got it right, before telling me that that still isn't good enough and that I now need to check my backup email, which in turn tells me that I'm doing a suspicious activity and that I must confirm it from a second backup email, which when I go to access it then asks for my mother's maiden name, which I clearly fabricated because I don't trust scammers not to know that information at this point, which in turn asks me to check my phone for a text code, which then doesn't come, so I then request another one and then the first one comes through and then I enter that and then it's wrong and then I have to do the whole process again. Add to that how using a VPN counts as suspicious activity and demands I sign into literally every site I've ever visited again, and at this rate, I'm just going to go back to using Banana123 again. Beyond a certain point, increased security just encourages people to be stupid again. I don't know if I have two-factor authentication enabled on the site, because to me, it already feels like at least 10. The only way it could get any worse is if it somehow implemented blockchain technology in some erroneous way. Rant over. Like I said, this video's been a long time coming. Now onto this video's actual purpose. A new passwordless collaboration between lots of big companies, including the important ones, looks to make Fido a man's best friend. Using this new system, when you need to log into a site, something will pop up on your phone requiring you to fingerprint or to face scan your identity. This system already exists, but the difference with this new one is, it uses blockchain technology. Just kidding, it uses Bluetooth to confirm that your two devices are physically next to each other when this happens. This is to cut out on phishing attempts from across the internet, which in theory should finally prevent 4chan from accessing your Amazon account. I know what you're thinking. Is that it? Bluetooth to prove devices are close to each other? That sounds like something I could have thought up. But I guess the difficulty isn't in devising a new standard, but in getting everybody to use it. And like I said, all of the big players are on board with this one. So that's the hard bit done. All the information required is stored as a single token on all of your verified devices. So the hope is that you'll always have something somewhere that's verified, otherwise I'm not sure what happens. What if I'm abroad and equipped with only one device? But don't worry, I'm sure there will be a company somewhere that devises some remote emergency dual device restore system of some kind, which will undermine the whole system. But what do I know? I'll put my faith in Fido knowing what it's doing. I hate that, up till now, my PC has been treated like a second-rate citizen. My phone is the one getting all of the cool updates, apps and security confirmations that itself can confirm using nothing but my fingers and face. Meanwhile, my PC isn't trusted to do anything, and it is forever requiring permission from my phone to do stuff. But this new system looks to even the playing field by finally giving my PC the permission to confirm stuff from my phone. How it's going to do that without a webcam or fingerprint scanner is anyone's guess. Maybe it'll ask for my mother's maiden name, which was probably harvested on Facebook 10 years ago when I did that challenge to identify what kind of fruit I was. Yes, I'm cynical, because I'm ignorant. But I'm all for these sort of measures being taken to make life easier for humans. 
Do you remember all those horrible prove you're not a bot tasks, which were swapped out for Google's simple button that you clicked to prove that you're a human? Yeah, that was great. Until they realised that they could instead use your clicks to train driverless cars and to identify signposts and buses. Let's hope Fido doesn't meet the same grisly fate.